I think a uh, uh, couple of people uh, uh, understand the fundamental of the lab safety and why it is important. So uh, there is one real time incidents happen in all lab also. So, you know, all the biosafety cabinet, they have the UV lamp in it, in build for a sterilization purpose. This happens one time when or one of our service engineer came to our lab for routine servicing of our equipment, which is installed within the biosafety cabinet. And knowingly, unknowingly, he was unable to switch off the UV light. And his eyes were exposed for a time being to the uh, UV light. I think it may be a just a few seconds, maybe 30, 40 seconds exposed. And when he come came back to his house and at night around 10, 11, his eyes start itching. And at midnight, till midnight, he was unable to open his eyes. It was swell, too much pain. And then he immediately rushed to a nearby emergency hospital. And there they did some kind of x-ray or thing like eye vision check. And they find that that superficially the UV damaged his eyes. And he was under treatment for another 15 days. So in a couple of videos which we uh, watch today and I also discussed yesterday some of the things. This UV exposure is not mentioned uh, so far. But uh, from our experience, we came to know that UV is also very, very dangerous. And most of time, we have the UV lamps in our laboratories whether it is a chemical laboratory, it's a biological, microbiology, where it is, you, we have the UV lamps installed in our facilities. So whenever you have the UV lamp active and working in that environment, please wear proper glasses over your eyes and also try to avoid direct focusing of UV to your, your body because that also damaged our skin. So uh, keeping that, uh, there is a, a one accident happened in the US and this is the another video. I think maybe this time you can see the sound also. Otherwise, I will send immediately link to also. In this, uh, uh, the, the investigator assess the problem associated with the negligence of the safety. Uh, if uh, you are unable to see the audio, then please go to that link. I think that link may help you out. And this is very important uh, video. You must watch and listen. And, and after that, I will move forward. In January 2010, two graduate students at Texas Tech University were conducting research on energetic or explosive compounds funded by the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. The students were tasked with synthesizing and performing tests on a new compound, a derivative of nickel hydrazine perchlorate. Initially, the compound was made in small batches of less than 300 milligrams. But the two students were concerned about potential variability among different small batches of the compound, which could affect later test results. So they decided to scale up the synthesis to make a single batch of approximately 10 grams, enough for all of their testing. They believed that keeping the solid compound wet with the solvent would keep it from exploding. After producing the larger batch, the more senior graduate student observed that it contained clumps that he believed needed to be broken up prior to testing. While wearing safety goggles, he transferred half of the new compound into a mortar, covered the compound with a solvent, and used a pestle to gently break up the clumps. After some time, he took his goggles off and walked away. A short time later, 
he decided to stir the compound once again. He did not replace his goggles. As the pestle pressed against the compound, it detonated. The graduate student was seriously injured, his left hand severely damaged by the force of the explosion, causing the loss of three fingers, perforation of his eye, and cuts and burns to other parts of his body. Post-accident photos and video show extensive damage as the explosion fractured the lab bench, shattered bottles, and sprayed the lab with projectiles. Professor Dominic Casadante was head of the Texas Tech Chemistry Department at the time of the accident. From my perspective as department chair, you go through the emotional trauma of, oh my gosh, somebody that I know has gotten very seriously hurt to soul searching, why did this happen? With these academic incidents, People like to focus on the immediate actions of the individual involved and try to poke holes and, and, and with hindsight, you know, assert some sort of blame on the incident, on the individual involved. And what we have to recognize is that there are bigger uh, systems at play here that can influence safety. The CSB investigation at Texas Tech found deficiencies in each layer of safety management within the institution. These included insufficient safety accountability and oversight by the principal investigators the chemistry department, and the university's administration. And according to investigators, there were also important gaps beyond the university itself. I think that the way we were a year and a half ago is pretty representative of the way that a lot of universities, especially chemistry departments, are around the country. The main lesson I would really like, and it's the way that I start a lot of my talks on safety, is there but for the grace of God go you, that is to say your universities. The victim at Texas Tech had been working on the energetic materials project for about a year at the time of the accident. But the CSB found that he did not receive any specific formal training on working with potentially explosive compounds. The two principal investigators believed they had verbally established a 100 milligram limit on the production of energetic materials. But the CSB investigation found there was no formal system for communicating this limit or verifying compliance. None of the lab researchers believed that a strict 100 milligram limit existed. When graduate students go into these new endeavors, a new project, um, a new process, they need to get specific training and they need to have it insured and have it assessed so they really understand what it is they're doing. And the CSB found that the use of personal protective equipment within Texas Tech laboratories was not consistently enforced. When we were at TTU, we learned that many people made the decision whether or not to wear their personal protective equipment based on the level of danger they felt that they were about to undertake. There's a lot of momentum here for um, safety consciousness on campus, but it shouldn't have had to come to that. Don't wait for a serious accident to happen on your campus to begin to think about safety and transform your own culture. we think about the role of principal investigators and senior campus administrators in lab safety programs, I have concerns because in many places I feel they are not providing the leadership in this that's needed. Dr. James Kaufman is the president of the Laboratory Safety Institute a nonprofit organization which provides safety training for universities. Academic institutions encourage their students to achieve excellence in their work. They need to apply that same high standard to their laboratory safety programs, environmental health and safety programs. To achieve a high safety standard, the CSB investigation identified key laboratory safety lessons for universities. Ensure that research-specific hazards are evaluated and then controlled by developing specific written protocols and training. Expand existing laboratory safety plans to address the physical hazards of chemicals. Ensure that safety personnel report directly to a university official who has the authority to oversee research laboratories and implement safety improvements. Document and communicate all laboratory near misses 
and incidents. You know, I, I have a PhD in physical chemistry, and I have a lab safety story. I could pull together many friends and we could sit in a room and share our lab safety stories. That should make us stop and ask these stories that we can share, those of us who've gone through the graduate program, you know, are those just stories or are those really opportunities to ensure that nobody dies again or nobody is seriously injured again, at least to the best of our abilities? Exploring the unknown, doing research, always involves risks. Those risks are worth taking. We know that as a society. And as a society, we owe it to ourselves to do them in the most efficacious and safe ways we can. Now, uh, I think all of you have watched this uh, video and uh, we are aware that how the important is the safety is there. Similarly, uh, even in the recent example of the negligence of the lab safety is coronavirus pandemic. I think a lot of people have already explored that one lab which is working on this virus somehow neglect the radiation uh, lab safety protocols and it transfer from there to a local area and then spread all over the world. It may be the negligence or it may be an accident but everyone is struggling with this mess so uh, it is very important and i yesterday I already uh, told you that chemical laboratory safety is immediate action because what happened happen it's immediate but in biological lab it takes some time to show your effects this, this is example of the lab safety. Even few years back, I think uh, anthrax virus, the spreading of anthrax virus is also uh, non-compliance of the lab safety or ethics in laboratory. From where the, in some US lab, it's started and the guy is responsible who is the scientist there to work the, that virus. So a lot of time it happens uh, because of the negligence from the side of the people, sometime intentionally, sometime accidentally. So uh, lab safety is very important. And with these two videos, first one is just a preview of yesterday lecture. And this is the one of the case study, which happened in the, some of the World International University. And the two people, researcher dies on the spot because of that accident. Even one time when I am working in CDRI also. So there is another lab which is working some kind of crystallization. And the guy in the late night started working with a dietary ether and he tried to crystallize some molecule using ether. And he left overnight and he came early in the morning and he wants to see whether the crystallization happened or not. As soon as he opened the flask and he just wants to see the flask explode and the glasses and ether spills into his eyes and he become totally blind forever. So these are the very few examples uh, maybe once in a lifetime or you can say all over world somewhere something happening but we ignore that this not happens to us 
but no we never try to invite an accident so we have to follow the all the laboratory safety fundamentally which is possible and that is the variants of the ppe kit because that will save first us and human life is more precious than anything else so my sincere request to all of you because you are the maybe first year second year or third year in your lab please wear at least gloves and eye goggles that will basically save you from any spillage and contamination during the your experiment so there is another uh, video which is uh, i wants to show you is the uh, safety in the your bi microbiology lab example because you know the microbiology lab you will find lot of biological steps and those steps are more dangerous than the human chemical because that will you take you to the your home also safety orientation after completing this video you should be able to one demonstrate proper primary and secondary containment procedures and two explain the procedures involved in dealing with a laboratory emergency primary containment primary containment concerns the protection of personnel and the laboratory environment from exposure to infectious microbes proper microbiological techniques such as the safe transport and disposal of cultures along with the correct use of personal safety equipment such as gloves and safety goggles go a long way toward accomplishing the goal of primary containment secondary containment secondary containment deals with protecting the outside environment from exposure to infectious organisms it depends principally on the design of the laboratory and the availability of equipment. As well, laboratory workers should maintain the lab's safety features, such as keeping a closed door closed or leaving an exhaust fan on. Prior to the lab Dress appropriately for the lab. No open-toed shoes or sandals and avoid clothing with baggy sleeves that could catch fire or hinder your movement. Know the location of the eyewash, safety shower, fire extinguisher, and first aid kit. Take a moment to learn their operation. During the lab. Always wear a lab coat, gloves, and safety goggles while working in the lab. The lab coat should only be used during lab and should remain in the lab. Even discounting potential biohazards, a lab coat will protect your clothing. There is a reason many of the chemicals you will be working with are called stains. Wash your hands prior to beginning the lab and just before leaving as well. Tie back any long hair. It is both a source of contamination and a fire hazard. Disinfect your bench top with a disinfectant prior to beginning work and just before leaving the laboratory. Disposal of contaminated materials. Dispose of plastic petri dishes, swabs, disposable gloves, inoculating tools, and similar non-reusable items in the biohazard container. Reusable supplies, such as culture test tubes and glass pipettes, should have all labels removed before being placed in a rack or container designated for autoclaving. Used microscope slides should be placed in a container for autoclaving or soaked in a disinfectant solution for a minimum of 30 minutes before being discarded. The international biohazard symbol on the containers not only marks the contents for autoclaving prior to disposal, but also cautions anyone in the room as to the possibly hazardous nature of the items inside the containers. And remember, do not overfill the container and never force objects into the container. Safety Considerations 
If you are pregnant or if you feel you shouldn't be in the lab because of health concerns, candidly discuss with your instructor. If your skin is exposed to microorganisms as a result of a spill, immediately wash with antiseptic. In the event of a spill, notify your instructor and your lab partners immediately. Broken glass and bacterial cultures are a hazardous combination. With your instructor's approval, cover the spill with paper towels and saturate the towels with disinfectant. After 15 to 20 minutes, carefully wipe up the spill and discard the paper towels in the biohazard container for autoclaving. Discard the broken glass in the sharps container. Okay, now we start with the second part of with knowing the all the safety precautions rules and relation now comes is the another the good laboratory practices good laboratory practices is a part of the laboratory safety because when we do the good practice it it may or it follow the all the rules and regulation of the laboratory safety so glp is an fda or it's a regulatory guide right like names and good laboratory practice is defined in oest 1997 as a principle of quality system concerned with the organization process and condition under which a non-clinical health and environmental safety studies are planned Performed, monitor, recorded, archived, or reported. So, good laboratory practices involved all the things which laboratory safety is one of the part of it. So, in US, uh, the FDA started formulating GLP guidelines somewhere in 1978, and further other countries follow it and especially the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development documented all the GLP procedures as an international standard to compliance for the development of both clinical and non-clinical products. Why was GLP created is another question. Since lot of time there is a lot of confusion regarding what to do and what to not do so in that case there is a regulatory aspect that okay we have to make guidelines that everybody should follow so make a society uniformly and in and abide by the law so in early 70s fda came to know that there is a very poor practices in the laboratories all over the United States and especially around the world also. So they decided that, okay, we will have to document some face safety features and guidelines to the labs and also to the other laboratories, which uses toxic materials and produces products for human consumption. So Keeping those in mind, documents, equipments, materials, handling, personality, and the lab structure, they classified other practices in a world world that is GLP. GLP is very big umbrella and it's under a lot of things comes, depend upon the need and infrastructure of your laboratory and for what you are working for so good laboratory practice may be also for a company which is making a product such as mobile or person or company which is making a medicine for us or company which is making a tv for us or a research lab which is working and for certain development of science and technology so we needed to 
adequate the test system or compliances and our working environment. So all this comes under GLP. Famous example, one of the lab that went under such investigation made headline news. The name of the lab was Industrial Biotest. This was a big lab that ran test for a big company such as Procter and Gamble. It was discovered that mice that they had used to test cosmetics such as lotion and deodorant had developed cancer and died. Industrial Biotest lab threw the dead mice and covered result deeming the product good for human consumption. Those involved in production, distribution, sales for the lab eventually served jail time. So keeping the non-ethical practices, the company and its employee did not disclose the data of these dead animals due to the application of lotion and that causes cancer to them and also marketed those products to the market. So these few examples prompted the regulatory authority to work for the safety of the human being and started trying to cover under GLP guidelines. So as far as the pharmaceutical development is concerned, GLP is a part of the regulatory body and apply only to study which are non-clinical, are designed to obtain data on properties and safety of the item respect to human health or the environment and intended to submit it to a national registration authority with the purpose of registering or licensing the test system or product derived from it, use the dose toxicity and repeated dose toxicity, subacute and chronic both. So for pharmaceutical development, GN GLP is a principle which document all the aspects of the regulation. And it's, uh, yeah. So this is very important. So you can uh, have this the data, which is the part of the good laboratory practices, and everybody should have to follow it. So keeping the GLP under those criteria, so a lot of forms data has to be documented. And that is also the part of the laboratory safety because when your labs are safe and are potential for work, then only you can generate the effective data. So the GLP data may be a carcinogenic potentiality of the drug, toxic kinetic studies, pharmacodynamic studies, or local tolerance studies and other related drug, if there is a withdrawal from any way, you have to document in that too. That all comes under the laboratory practices. So what is the objective of the GLP? So GLP objective is that whatever you sub submitted, it is reflect truly as the results comes to you. So, and when you revert back, you will find the same thing what you have documented. So all these things comes with the good practices and lab management. And if your data are compliance with the laboratory safety or objective, then it is already internationally accepted. So in theoretically, the principle of GLP is to promote the development of quality test data, obtain reliable and reproducible data, obtain comparable data between the two countries. For example, if your experiment is performed in your lab and it is scientifically true, then it may be repeated with the same results 
by other country or the lab and this is possible only when you document all the data in a clean and tidy manner with taking care of all the laboratory practices and safety in consideration and that i is now internationally acceptable also so in principle uh, glp uh, is the part of the project where you can say that uh, if we compliance the laws then safety regulatory authorities guidelines will be compliance and this will create an international confidence to your data and your lab that you people are working on the right direction so the glp mission is that is just like a cyclic system when you have a test system you know how to archive it recording our material apparatus material reagent how you how you handle it how you label them how you keep them how do you quality assure your reagents and facilities these are all comes under the good laboratory practices or you can say the lab is a part of the laboratory safety also and then comes to your experiment and performance and your test system so all are interconnected if you miss anything you lose the quality of your work and also your accreditation to the international scenario so principle of good practice as per the oecd guidelines are concerned is utilizing common management and scientific practice and experience from various national and international sources so they documented from the other sources other countries labs uh, idea thoughts what their approach and they document in a concrete manner that now this is the glp from principles and everybody has to follow it so the purpose of principle of glp is to promote the development of quality test data and to make or to promote the standards of laboratory work using guidelines and sharing the data within the community for the welfare of the human development so non clinical safety testing of test items pharmaceutical products pesticides cosmetics veterinary products food additive feed additives industrial chemicals all comes under glp guidelines so if you want to anything for them for the development or a commercial sources then you have to follow the glp guidelines of that specific end product development whether it's in a laboratory phase or it may industrial phase so in summarizing the glp principle uh, i would say this it is started with the apparatus material and reagent okay and then you do the test and references substances and also the standard operating procedure so if you have anything if you want to do any experiment there are certain set of procedures you have to follow this facility also have some standard operating procedures how to facilitate them how to treat them how to clean them how to manage them the facility and performance of study if you want to perform some study how these studies are designed what are the equipments manpowers what kind of expertise you need to perform those tests are documented well before starting of that study so test and reference system standard operating procedure for facility as well as the performing the system is mandatory and is a part of the glp and also the part of the good laboratory practices or laboratory safety also reporting of study results is another challenging job if you are not good on your documenting the your test results 
it's very difficult to summarize the results so storage writing documenting of the records and materials of test results of error experiment is very important and also important is this how you third party evaluation of the io test result for example if you do any experiment and you have some test results you showed your supervisor or your colleagues also that see this is my results and then they will comment on you know the this is the flaws or this is very good you have done maybe you can add this too to enhance your experiment data so this is all comes under the glp principle most of time we follow those results or we try to match it but sometimes we are not aware the exact principles and policies of the glp but we follow and in my opinion uh, at for the sgpj is concerned we followed lot of glp principles here whether we know the exactly rules or not or not but we follow it so testing facility organization and personal is also a part of the glp because when you are wearing uh, your gloves lab coat uh, eye goggles and your head cover or your whatever the need for your experiment to perform or your npp you also compliance the glp principles that is the one part of it so uh, we do lot of good research and we do the glp principle compliance in our laboratories so good laboratory practice uh, the test facility organizations and principle this is one principle test facility management responsibilities and other responsibilities of the uh, glp which is defined by the principle sufficient number of people working documentation of the records provide variable training to the people and also appropriate sops to be written documented and read and explain to the newcomers which entered in your lab and finally the quality assurance of the all the experiment you performed and you are and you are going to perform you know the what are the quality parameters we have to follow to sure that whatever we are do, doing is at par excellence so what is the director's responsibility means or you can the supervisor responsibility to conduct the study and its final report approve the study plan and any amendment possible assure that the quality control is performed as per the documented and all the documents should be recorded and validated by the respective concerned experimenter as well as the supervisor what is the principal investigator responsibility to ensure that the delegate faces of the study are conducted in accordance with the compliance principle of the glp so uh, it is the principal investigator or your supervisor's responsibility that you perform as per the guidelines of the glp and documents each and every steps whether it's positive result or negative in your document sheet in order to match the com uh, data with the others group and also in according to the uh, matching with the international standards so there is also a responsibility of the prince person who is working with the on the bench that means he must have the knowledge of all the glp practices to assess the study plan and appropriate sob sops health precautions or health precaution to minimize risk means he must assess the risk associated with this experiment and also respond to any mishappening or accident happen and also and document try to document all the data whether it's raw data or final data in a as per the sop guidelines so for personal people working the glp says we need to educate the people we need to train them we need a general training which 
is the gen in general form that okay this is the raw that you have to write in a clear writing with date experiment number time duration of the experiment and what are the materials you use material safety data whether they are the material have the certificate of analysis or not these all all comes under general training and for a specific training for our example if you are working in a radiation lab or if you are working in a viral lab so there is extra laboratory practice training where you have to deal with the how you can save yourself and your surrounding by some special kind of pp kits and training and how to handle the accidents if happen both personal experience or both and form and both of the combination of training help to perform the experiment as per the glp guidelines and foremost glp always says personal sanitization health health is on priority so we have to work for our own health also and for our own health or coworkers health is also dependent so glp document the quality assurance program is or that quality assurance is a very broad term and sometimes it may be classified in different manner for example quality assurance of the person quality assurance of the equipment quality assurance of the chemical or reagents or consumer which are you using so quality assurance of person for example in your lab maybe some person have very good practical hand they perform very good experiment and so your supervisor just visualize and have a full confidence but a couple of people always are at the risk of doing something messy and people never trust over them or they have a question mark whether they did perform as per the rule or not so that is the individual assurance of its work and that comes with your documenting the your data and presenting yourself in front of your supervisor how good you are so that is very important we have to run a quality assurance program for a individual as well as for the others example quality assurance of the your management facility also for example your fan is working on your light is working on if you are have a bio safety camera whether it have the exhaust on or not it's working fine or not these are the quality assurance of the equipments and the facility itself then comes to the quality control of the methods suppose if you are doing some method to perform experiment so whether that method is really applicable to that experiment or not that comes from your experience or literature or your knowledge or your search for literature for a specific experiment so all these things comes under the quality assurance program and it is very important that you must follow all the quality assurance document and this is the part of the glp principle compliance so maintaining the quality assurance maintain the copies of master schedule sheet protocol and sops is also a part of the quality assurance program and is couple of time you will find that your sops or your working may be changed as per the experiment designed or planning so uh, your inspection to a specific experiment also changes as per your need so considering the quality assurance the inspection is also classified in three part one is study based inspection facility based inspection or process based inspection so what is the facility based inspection that means whether i already told you that testing a facility bed suppose you enter in your lab and you your light is not coming to your lab you are unable to do anything so that is the very primary steps that you have to check whether your facility is is 
in situation that you can work in that area or not if your facility is there then you will check whether you have all the intact for example if you are working in a wet based thing you need a water whether your water facility is working or not your disposable facility is, is at par at not if you are having an animal facility so whether animal care facility are as per the GLP guidelines temperature of, of the facility is at par or not otherwise animal will die or infection will prevail in them so testing faces system facility means suitable size construction and location is the prime key suppose if you want to do experiment you will say okay I need this much of a space I need this much of food I need this much of area to work for me very limited narrow area it's very difficult for you to come to work with. if you have a dust free environment need you need a dust free environment a lot of time you find in biological lab, lab you need a moderate temperature room temperature extreme cold and extreme hot will destroy your experiment so you need to have maintained that too so laboratory should be well ventilated free from dust draft and extreme temperature so as far as the guideline minimum of 150 square foot of floor space and minimum six linear feet of usable bench space should be provided for each analyst or for each worker in order to perform his experiment accurately archive facility means securing the storage retrieval of the study plan raw data final report and specimen to prevent timely deterioration that means how you are securing your data is also very very important because when you want to repeat your experiment those data is the key to your success waste disposable means if you are performed your experiment there must be some wastage coming out of it how do you are going to storage and dispose of from your lab and how you decontaminate it is also comes under the GLP so as far as the animal facility, I think Dr. Baranwal uh, already explained or maybe he sometimes you will go to his lab and you know, his area and you will do the lot of uh, animal care facility. But uh, in broad, you know, the animals are more sensitive, uh, laboratory animal especially are more sensitive to us. So they should be kept in very clean, tidy, noiseless environment and also a hygienic environment. So in order to have the ready for the experiment because their healthiness or healthy environment or their health is very, very important for our experiment. So in terms of equipment are concerned, equipment should be adequately timely inspected maintained and cleaned by the respective authority or person in charge who is taking care of the equipment because if your equipment is not calibrated and not working properly you will not get the right data or measure assessment of the data so calibration as well as the standardization of the equipment is very very important and for the good laboratory practice or for the good lab safety it is important that each equipment must have its logbook where you enter all the usage calibration and maintenance of the services to the specified equipment so as for the test system whether it's chemical or physical apparatus suitably located and or appropriate design and adequate capacity so for chemical uh, we have the all the company provide the materials of safety data sheet that narrate all the things how to store how to use and when it will, will be expired and what is the best time to use it and similarly in the biological sample also handling care and storage is well documented if we are purchasing from a company or anything which is newly created or tested should be isolated from others in order to 
have a safety of the others. So very important thing is record of sources, data of arrival and arrival condition of test system means whenever you have purchased something, you must add a date over it that okay, I purchased this thing on this date comes to our lab and this is the opening date of this portal. So you have to consume within this period of time and keeping those consumable in a well clean and sanitized area and monitoring time to time is also a part of GLP as well as the good laboratory practices or good laboratory. So test and reference item may be received. If you receive any chemical, there is a must be a purchase order for it. Handling, how you are handling, how you are sampling, how your storaging is mentioned in MSDS. Data will expiry, expiry date, quantity you receive should be mentioned, characterized whether it's solid, liquid, or your batch number, your laboratory batch number, or your impurity or composition and concentration, or are mentioned over the sticker of the bottle or packaging which you received. So, as the SOPs are concerned, for each and every laboratory, there is a different SOPs for different experiments. So we have to ensure that all SOPs are well arranged, kept in a, and, and, and documented as per the need of the experiment. If there is a, a deviation in SOP, it should be clearly documented and amendment should be kept with the original SOPs. Routine inspection, cleaning, maintenance and testing and calibration of the facility should be done and documented and there is action taking time is required if there is any failure in the routine job it should be documented so amendment to the study plan should be justified and approved by the competent authority and any deviation in the study plan should be described and ex explained and acknowledged and get authorized by the respective agency for example if you are performing any uh, human or animal experiment and you have some changes in a study plan it should be documented in the your log book and also reported to the review committee animal review committee to have the things documented and explained to you so uh, for protocol for the laboratory study uh, i will say Identification, what kind of experiment you are doing, statement and purpose of experiment, identification of test items, name and address of sponsor, test facility and test site, name of the study director and other person or your supervisor, proposed date, justification for selection of the test system, description of test and experimental design. These are the few broad parameters which should be follows in performing any laboratory study. So for non-clinical laboratory studies, you know, the study should be conducted in accordance with the protocol because whatever we do, we have some protocol. So we follow, try to follow those protocol. Information for the specific payment should be present on the continent over error in recording and storage of data and all data generated should be recorded directly and, and the concern was given to the supervisor. So, in finally, the, the information on a sponsor, objective and procedure of the stated in protocol should be documented. Quality assurance program should be stated well and any storage of the final document should be as per the guidelines of the test experiment or laboratory should be documented. So, Finally, the storage and retention of record and material. So in broad, we say the plan of study is well documented. All raw data should be kept for as an archive. Sample of tests should be performed as per the guideline. The reference item should be well documented. Specimens are in compliance with the test results and final report of each studies are well organized and jointly corrected and edited by the at least two senior persons 
and an inspection was performed by the supervisor who is in charge of this thing. So record of qualification training experience is also important because whenever we do training to the person, it comes under the GLP guidelines and how the person who is the responsible for that and who is performing the experiment and whether the calibration of test results are there or not should be documented well. So there is a lot of scope for GLP. In principle, uh, GLP gives you uh, environmental safety studies and registering and licensing of your product, whether it's a pharmaceutical product, it's a pesticide, food or feed, cosmetic or any industrial chemicals. So if you have the GLP in your facility, that gives you a lot of plus to finally get you the thing done. So this is uh, uh, all for the today.